Snass Junk. Hi there, let's keep last week's theme going with more bad games with great music, although I should mention that we're getting into some territory here where some of these games aren't all that bad, at least in my opinion. Like, for example, to start out with, we have Spider-Man and X-Men in Arcade's Revenge, and call me crazy, but I don't really think this game is that bad. It's stupidly difficult, and you can find much better games out there, but I always thought it was at least an okay game, and a big part of that is because of the music composed by Jeff and Tim Follin. And for me, it's like, say, no more. They made music for tons of stuff, everything from Equinox, Plock, Super Off-Road, Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball, and lots of NES stuff too, like Solstice, Silver Surfer, and that infamous Pictionary soundtrack. Spider-Man and X-Men and Arcade's Revenge is right up there with the best of them though. The music goes all over the place, from mellow and ambient, to a killer lead guitar solo, to drum sections that sound like they should come from Neil Peart. And what's crazy is that these tracks are all like five or six minutes long, there's hardly any looping. It's seriously such an impressive effort. Listen for yourself. Let's go back into bad games, and for me personally, there are a few games out there that were more disappointing than Wolverine Adamantium Rage. It's got some of the worst controls in any Super Nintendo game I can remember playing, so a typical playthrough of this game usually consists of Wolverine diving around like an idiot and charging forward with his head down like he thinks he's Juggernaut or something. It's a terrible game, but thankfully the music is fantastic, composed by Dylan Beale, and believe it or not, it features some of the earliest examples of grime music.
The next game that falls into the bad category is Draken. This one does have its fans out there, and it does have a certain kind of charm to it that I like, but it's a really confusing and sometimes downright broken game. If you like dying instantly out of nowhere, then man, this game is for you. But to the game's credit, the music is very good, and has some great moments that pop up here and there. The soundtrack was expanded on the SNES compared to its original version, and it's composed by Hiroyuki Masuno. Here's a really bad game, Eek the Cat. I remember liking the cartoon, but the game is terrible. Every level is an escort mission, the graphics are oddly dark for some reason, as you can see, and it really has nothing to do with the show. I mean, that barely even looks like Eek the Cat. Apparently this one was originally called Sleepwalker for the Amiga, and publisher Ocean Software decided to make it an Eek the Cat game somehow. Well, it didn't work, the game sucks, but the music is at least good. It's composed by Barry Leach and Dean Evans.
Here's another Dean Evans game based on the movie Cool World. Man, that poor guy got saddled with some truly bad games. When I first sat down to play this one, my first thought was, this is a lot like Wizard of Oz, and that's never a good thing. That's easily one of the worst Super Nintendo games ever, and this isn't that far behind it. There's not very much music in this game at all, but what's here is great, and again, it's composed by Dean Evans, the same guy that did Waterworld. Last but not least, there's the Super Nintendo game based on the movie The Lawnmower Man. I give this game points for trying, there's some cool ideas here like flying around in a first person perspective, but ultimately this one just falls kind of flat. Except for the music, composed by Alistair Brimble, and this is the part of the video where I shut up so you can listen for yourself, and I want to thank you for watching and listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!